fire protection plan. And what we did, which was I thought the most important thing, is we've had two major fires in Sandy in 2008 and 2009. So we actually invited the citizens, and we had approximately 25 to 30 citizens that would come for about four meetings. And we started talking to them about what the problems were with the fires. And that's where Ready, Set, Go came, because we did have an evacuation. And at the evacuation center, we only had, I think, six people show up to it. So and that was one of their points. They also felt that there was too many people coming into the fire area. So at that point, we decided we'd come up with a plan. Oh, and the other thing they also told us, they did not know what they were going to do, um, that, you know, what to do and, what to, and where they were going to go. So um, we've come up with a few different plans that how we address the situation. Um, and basically, we decided that we were going to go to door to door and identify and tell people how to evacuate the uh, area. Uh, we're bringing Ready, Set, Go. We're starting to do it in waves. We start with the uh, uh, outer houses that are right next to the gully and the Wasatch Front. We actually identified about a four block range that our firefighters, and especially, which is important, going out at night after 6 o'clock and on Saturdays and possibly some Sundays. In the second wave, we're using volunteers to knock, but we'll have fire engines with them. We've also identified um, the churches in the area, um, just because Utah is a um, very LDS community. We're actually identifying our emergency manager coordinators and meeting with those people. We're also meeting with a bunch of community groups. I've actually presented this program uh, four times already to community groups. And I've actually had the opportunity to present it, and I've actually watched one of the presentations. It's actually been really amazing to watch the people watch the videos and get real active. Um, we also have, we're also getting TV spots. We have a local channel, uh, 17, and we plan to make a media blitz that we're actually trying to coordinate with the other fire agencies, so we'll be the lead agency in there. The other thing which is unique to this pro project is now we have internet site that we're attaching with Ready, Set, Go um, to, the, to the site. And we're also using things like Twitter and other things, and Twitter and Facebook and ways to early warn people about uh, what they need to do. Some of the teaching points we've done, again, we've identified two high schools. We've also pre-planned with the high school and we're pre-planning with Red Cross to help us do that. Um, we're also going to schools, and we're also putting evacuation signs and teaching people and giving them maps of where to go. Um, we're also stressing that we will give them early return to the homes. The other thing we developed with the police, we found in the fires that the police would follow the fire department in and not block the areas out. So one thing to give the people confidence, the police department has now, we have blocked predetermine where all the blocks would be based on where the fire is. Uh, we've also let the community know where our staging points will be on based on four areas where fires are most likely have a history of go occurring. And that would also hopefully give the people a more likelihood to evacuate because that was one of their fears in the last time. Um, basically, we're just teaching the principles of race that go, what to, when to leave, what to do, and when to go. And we're also spending a lot of time on home preparedness and awareness of what's in their environment, um, just trying to help people understand uh, what's, what to do. Uh, the other thing which I didn't mention is we're actually using farmers' uh, insurance. We actually have signs which they can place in their windows saying we're okay um, and that we need help. Uh, farmers has actually been a real big part of that, and so the people know they're leaving it. Um, those um, things and we'll know what to do and if they do need help we'll be able to go there. Anyway, um, I'm Captain Feldman. I'm more than happy if you have any questions you can email me and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you Jeff. I do appreciate your, your presentation. Our uh, final speaker is uh, John Hobbs, Assistant Chief for Hunt Huntsville Fire Department in Walker County, Texas, and has been in the fire service for 30 plus years. 
is the chief over suppression on a combination fire department that covers 100 structure fires a year. He holds an advanced level certification as a firefighter, fire inspector, fire investigator, and instructor. His passion is fire prevention. Huntsville is the other beta community uh, implementing Ready, Set, Go. We'll be profiling today. John will describe the reasons why Huntsville is interested in using the Ready, Set, Go program, describe expected outcomes, and talk about the process for implementing the Ready, Set, Go tool. John? John, are you there? Good afternoon. Do you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, excuse me. Our community is surrounded by the uh, Sam Houston National Forest on the south and the east side. Um, our community, while, while in protection, had planned has taken several years to complete, and we were also the first in the state to complete one with the help of the Texas Forest Service and the National Forest Service. We're kind of a unique community because we are financially limited because of the location of five prisons in the city limits and 17 or 16,000 students in the state university, also in our city limits, that give us a low tax base. Most factors combined will give us a high property rate. This next slide we're going to focus on, we kind of we kind of did a different approach than Utah, that we took a large subdivision in our community that in, in our uh, assessments, our 80 assessments came up as the uh, top one that we need to implement, ready, set, go, and we'll go through a few things real quick. It's, it's surrounded by National Forest on, on three sides. It's never seen a reduction project along its borders. Across the road is I-45, which is a major thoroughfare from Houston and Dallas, Texas, with the average traveling of 55,000 cars a day. Across the road, there's a prison unit with 2,000 inmates and guards along with the manufacturing complex of 100 people with a private school of close to 200. So you can see how these, these came to our uh, attention as we were doing our assessments. The next picture I want to show you is the, the type of fuels that we have in and around this subdivision that showed us what concerns we have to work with. This is a typical road going in and out of the subdivision based on the same use of national force on the right-hand side. There's heavy fuels from top to bottom. This is a typical road in and out of this subdivision of 1,400 homes. There's two ways in and out. It was started in the late 40s and is now bloomed into about 1,400 homes of retired working class people in our community. Work to be done. We've had two homeowners association meetings. We've had postcards that were developed for the homeowners to know and locate the uh, facts and fires of their subdivision. A fuel reduction plan has been in the planning with the National Forest and, and private sector on three sides of this subdivision. So we're very excited that we have these partners involved. We are right in the process now of reviewing a FEMA grant from the Texas Forest Service to reduce the fuels on the south side. Ready? We want to be a fire wise community out there because we've got to move a lot of people. And that's going to be hard to do. We want to adapt fire adapt communities out there so we can show other parts of our county that we can work together to make it safer for them to live in the urban interface. We're going to put out literature, mail out, door hangers, and the fire department and the CERT Corp Corporation is going to work together to do that in the subdivision because it's very large. Special events, we will be out there Labor Day, I mean Memorial Weekend, May 31st, for approximately four hours with some information some boards and some handouts on Ready, Set, Go, and then get their buy-in with a questionnaire, when can we have a town meeting of this subdivision so I can put on the Ready, Set, Go program. 
July 4th, there's another function out there. We will be out there in full force with our partners from the Sam Houston National Forest and the Texas Forest Service getting our message out to that community. National Night Out in November will be there again like we were last year. And we did talk about wildland fires last year. We're going to form a FireWise program um, out there in that subdivision, and we're going to utilize the CERT training uh, people out there also. Set. We have a code red in our community that we can register, and it's functional, that we can have a registered uh, sign-up for all the people and give them the information. So all they have to do is carry their cell phones or their home phones, and when something's happening, either it being possibly a hazardous material spill out in the highway, a lost child, a prisoner escape, Elkers Lake Homeowners Association on that. A vacuum, evacuation route signage is real important because it's an older subdivision with narrow roads and if it's way out, it will help us all. Safety zones are being identified and marked if they have to stay in place. Of this nature. Fire danger signs are something we want to put out at both entrances to make the people aware day in and out when they go in and out, what's the danger doing. And we've also contacted our local newspaper to see if they would put something on top of their newspaper saying, what is the fire danger in our city and our county this morning? The 13, the 13 gets notified by their, by their captain when the fire danger goes too high. Go. All evacuations will be announced through the local media contacts, the emergency responders, and through Code Red. We have a very we have a local radio station that's worked with us for many years to put out our message when there was a problem in our community. Evacuate will be directed to one or two more sites that were within several miles of that, so we can move them and and keep them in areas where they can get back as quickly as possible until we handle the situation. The evacuee is also in advance. They will be told we have an actual um, evacuation center that's been built and developed for our county for hurricanes that we also can be used to remove anybody from the subdivision and keep them there. This is a picture of one of the fires that we had in our community this last year. And you can show I've got a different terrain than some of the folks that we're talking today. But when I get my big fuels on fire, it's a different type of battle. We'd like to thank everybody for listening today. We have to show the Elkins Lake picture and then three others. This is the this is the one went back to it just to show you the heavy fuels that are around the subdivision. Of course it's an arrow. If you got down into this subdivision, there's still a lot of fuels. And that's where it's going to be real important that we have the town meeting. Or even if I can break it down into sectors or lake area, I want to get in there and show them how important it is to take care of zone one and zone two for the embers, because that's going to be our main concern. Again, the Wholesome Fire Department appreciates the ITs for having us be part of this program. If there's any questions, please you can contact me at email. Thank you again. Thank you, John. Do appreciate that. Um, now we're going to begin our a question and answer period. Um, if you have questions for our presenters, please type them into the question box on the right, and I'll ask them aloud. Okay, one question we have is um, maybe maybe directed to Bob, and maybe some of the beta communities would like to talk about this. Um, some questions about the uh, financial support 